guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for a friendly, helpful vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Today is a blue day and we're going to look in on blue. Last time was about four weeks ago where we did a fluff and feed, but today we're going to try and get a little bit of a harvest out of this 55 gallon bin. All right, let me put you up and then we will see if we can get something to harvest because I have some plants to up pot and I also have some stuff going in the ground this week. So I'm gonna need those castings. Okay, so we're just gonna take one handful at a time and uh, put it into this one quarter of an inch screen. And I do have these listed on my Amazon store in the uh, description of the video below. But I do get these on Amazon. They're a little pricey, but they live forever. They are very good. I've been using these on bonsai soil as well as on castings for at least five years now. I'm just gonna throw all these overs at the far end of the bin. But I am getting some, so that's good. Got tomatoes to up pot. Uh, technically, we say we don't uh, plant outside until at least after Mother's Day here, which I have about another week and a half for that. So we just need to keep everybody happy until they can go outside. It's, it's one of those things where although the weather has been kind of nice here, um, you just can't trust it not to freeze and kill all of your plants. So I just say better safe than sorry. And I'm not getting a great recovery here. Most of the time when it is completely ready, I get about 50%. And then anything that is left on top is usually long-term for blah, blah, long-term foods like seeds and nuts and shells. But if it's not going to get finished up, it might as well go back to the beginning now, right? have been leaving the plastic off of the finished end so it's a little too dry. This is what happens when you let your castings dry out too much. They kind of turn into a rock. So that is one of the, the problems with letting them get too dry is that you have to rehydrate them to even sift them or, or use them because you just have tiny little rocks here. All right, so there we go. We've got a couple of seedlings that we're gonna move out of there. I'm not seeing any worms, so that's good. They seem to have moved on, but you can see apricot, pit, and then also all of the other shells and pits. But yeah, I can be pretty rough with these screens. I mean, I'm, they were, I bought them originally for bonsai soil, which is, is pretty coarse and also very rough. So these things do live forever, I think. I'm not sure if the brand matters. I think this was the one that I found that fit on top of a five gallon bucket. And uh, that was kind of what I was looking for as far as usability. So that's what I purchased. I think they do come both bigger around and smaller if that's what you need. I'm just gonna pick out a little bit of the top here. And I'm absolutely fine with things taking multiple multiple times through the bin that's fine for me it's a continuous flow system so hmm, i don't know what that is I'll take it out so the worms gets a chance to eat it again and not only that but whatever microbes or fungi or um, little pill bugs or whatever else lives in here gets a chance to break it down just like in nature uh, finish your food even if it takes you all year that kind of thing I think I'm going to do about one more scoop off the top here just to get the, the really dry stuff. I never actually have gold panned before. I feel like I would be good at it. Okay, so there we go. Got some really nice castings here. You can see all the eggshell that hasn't dissolved yet, but has been pro you know processed by the worms. So these are some really nice castings for potting up my tomato plants. All right, so three weeks ago, I'm just gonna talk and work at the same time here. Three weeks ago, we came in here and fluffed and fed. 
and they got a good amount of pumpkin. So put in the comments below, what is your worm's favorite food? What have you seen them just power through super fast? I think pumpkin is definitely my worm's favorite. I can usually guarantee that there will be practically nothing left after about two weeks, no matter how big the pumpkin is. Kind of fluffing through here a little bit. Um, you may notice when I'm doing this that the bin that is more finished or the side of the bin that is more finished is thicker and that is because this stuff is kind of waiting. That is a walnut. Is that a walnut? How did a walnut get in there? I think it must have come in with some leaves or something. Surely I don't have squirrels in my basement. Okay, so even here we're starting to see some worms, which is a little unusual at this end of the bin. Normally they have migrated where the moisture and the food is better over there. But yeah, it's deeper over here because this is where the castings are kind of curing and drying. And I don't, you know, I don't feed down here. So it doesn't, you know, as far as the surface area ratio doesn't really matter. But what I am trying to do is make sure that there is no anaerobic spots here. And especially at this stage of these castings development, I sure wouldn't want that to happen. The idea is to keep all the good microbes going and healthy so that when I use them, they uh, help recharge my soil and in my pots. I do a lot of potted peppers and figs. So it's super important to make sure that all that biology stays alive. And the kind of biology that I do want is aerobic. So without air, we're encouraging some of the bad guys to get going. All right. Still seeing quite a few worms here. There is about 15 pounds of worms in this bin, and they are a mix of the red wigglers, the European night crawlers, and blue worms, and then also what is native to my area outside, which are, I think, rubellus. Today, what we are going to do is I'm going to take somebody's advice and increase the species of worms, and I'm going to put some African night crawlers in here. Let me know what your thoughts are. I've had African night crawlers in the basement before, and they didn't do well, but I started them out in the winter time, so maybe it was a shock from wherever they lived previously before I bought them. So I'm thinking if I start them now, perhaps they will acclimatize themselves to this environment and they will be okay. So let me know what your thoughts are about that. I'm trying to make a good amount of room. I did make quite a bit of bedding and they do have a good amount of food to eat, people food today. So I'm trying to make some good room here. Looks like those leaves are still in process and that, that's totally fine, I'm fine with that. All right, we're at the middle here and this is where things are probably two to three months old. So this is where we still have the potential or start having the potential to have uh, a worm ball. All right, let me move you down and we'll get to the business end of the bin. Real quick, here is a beautiful blue worm. I know it's, it's sometimes they're hard to see, but uh, this guy is not real happy with me because I just pulled him out of his food. But they're just beautiful and shiny blue. Put him over there. Okay, so we're, we're still digging. Lots of worms here. This smells pretty good. Not noticing any anaerobic pockets here. They're doing a good job of making lots of castings for me. Let's get all these big sticks and put them at the end, though. All right, so what I'm hoping to do with putting African Nightcrawlers in here is to get another species that is just really good at doing carbon. And that is one of the things that I think maybe could use some help in here. Although the Red Wigglers, the European Nightcrawlers, and the Blue Worms and the Robalis do a good job of eating most things, they are just, they're not the rock stars that African night crawlers are when it comes to eating carbonaceous foods such as leaves and cardboard bedding. So I'm thinking that maybe I can, that's that tea, 
We put that block T in there. I'm just thinking that they will be better at it and therefore process my Amazon boxes, etc., faster than what these guys are doing. Because I often see the people food disappears very quickly, but then the, the carbon ends up sticking around for quite a long time. So everything still smells good. No problems, not going anaerobic. Um, I know a lot of people that first get into worm farms are like, how can you not look at your worms for almost a month? Well, I think I accidentally did it the first time and um, got stuck on vacation with COVID and the worms didn't have anybody to come take care of them. And they were just totally fine. They were a month without me coming in and feeding them or aerating them or anything. And so that kind of got me thinking, I know they really don't like being disturbed. So, you know, that kind of is a win-win for both of us. I can focus, you know, one week at a time on one particular kind of worm. And then these guys also can go undisturbed for long periods of time where they can kind of chill, you know? Now, the, the mix of worms that's in here right now is kind of a chill group of worms anyway. The African night crawlers are the ones that are kind of drama queens. Chicken bones and a cork. So we'll see how that works with them being down here. We'll have to see. Now this is, what is that? Not sure. But we're doing good. All the food looks like it's being processed as far as the people food goes. And I know some people think that I'm being rough with the worms, but just imagine like you washing your hair. That's all the harder that my, all the more pressure that is being um, exerted on the worms here. They are totally fine. I think I smell some lime or lemon or something. Okay, maybe, maybe we're gonna get a worm. Maybe we are going to get a worm bin. Nope. Maybe we are going to get a worm ball. There we go. Heck yeah. Look at that. Good worms. Good worms. Can you hear them? It's kind of like Rice Krispies. All right. So they must have found that pureed food that we put in there last time. Instead of drying my eggshells and baking them and putting them through the spice grinder, I've just been putting them in a regular blender with some food. Uh, and blending it up into a puree and uh, it's easier I'm all about you know work smarter not harder and so we just put them in the blender blend them up with some people food and some water and make a slurry out of it and it seems to be going really well don't you think let me know how do you put grit into your bin what are your your thoughts on that there we go all right let's get them some food all right, that is my prepared bedding, and that's been soaking in a solution of kelp meal water and nice warm water. Kind of break down the fibers a little bit so that it's nice and easy for the worms to eat. And that'll make a good base for the food they're going to get. This is uh, the little bucket that I use to collect my food scraps. I can put a link to that. I haven't done it previously. It's got a carbon filter that goes inside there so the gnats don't get at it. Um, stainless steel, totally washable. It comes with some of the um, supposedly compostable bags, but uh, I'm calling BS on those. And some bananas. And then let me get their puree. I am going to kind of shake it a little bit because it does seem to settle in the bottom. It doesn't really smell that bad. I honestly thought when I first started doing this that it would smell terrible. But I think mixing it with a little bit of rice or some kind of leftovers kind of breaks up that eggy smell. And it ends up being fine. I don't smell anything in the basement, you know, when I come down here to water the plants. So win-win. Okay, then another couple of gallons of the prepared bedding. If you're interested in that, I do have a, a video on me making that. I'm going to add a little bit of castings from the top here to get some of the microbes in with the brand new food and bedding. There we go, chicken bone. Yes, I know it'll take years. 
So as you can see, this is kind of lower. This is a little bit higher. And then over there is very tall. And that is one of the things that seems to make this work. The sheer amount of surface area on here, I think is what makes this bin cycle so quickly. Okay, and then I have some African night crawlers here that I'm gonna dump into there. It's not a bunch of them. You know, I didn't really, if it, it's an experiment. I don't wanna waste a bunch of the African night crawlers if they're not gonna like it. And quite honestly, I'm not sure how I'm gonna tell them apart from the blue worms. But since I know that that bin only has African night crawlers, I have no choice but to believe that they're in here. All right, there we go, cover it up. If you liked this video, I have a whole playlist of blue that I will link over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over there. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.